Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daryloth, thank you guys for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome, and if you are old to the channel, welcome back. Today, we're going to be going over a self-silence list. Now, self-silence uh, is a archetype that really I don't see anybody ever play. <laughs> it's something that's very niche, uh, and I don't know, it's not the first thing that people think of when they look at a lot of these cards, right? Um, but there are several cards in Legends that give you a negative effect for playing them, and those are the cards that you play in self-silence lists because you actually eliminate the negative effect when you silence them. So kind of a, it's kind of a big brain deck. Um, there's a lot of really good silence cards that you can use to, uh, to utilize this. Corpus Disease is one of them. I think this card is very slept on. Uh, it's really good in these, these types of lists, and just giving a flat plus two for one as an action is pretty good as well. So um, yeah, what kind of cards are we running that are going to be benefiting from this? We've got the Encumbered Explorer. This is a one cost two, three that shackles itself after he attacks. So if we can remove that effect, we get a pretty early uh, a pretty early card with a pretty decent stat line. Uh, Siege Catapult is a two cost four, four that can't attack unless your side of its lane is full. So if we remove that effect, like let's say we play Siege Catapult turn two, and then we have a mute for the next turn, we now have a four, four for two essentially three if we muted it, um, that our opponent was not expecting to just get up and hit it. The Craven Conscript is a 5-4 for three that is permanently shackled unless it's equipped with an item. You'll notice we have no items in this deck, so the only way that this thing is getting up is if we silence it. Again, our opponent is not going to be expecting this to just pop up and hit it, so really good kind of hidden card there. Corrupted Shade, 5-5 five, five for four. We have a lot of fours in this list. 5-5 uh, five, five for four with Ward, and at the end of your turn, if Corrupted Shade doesn't have a Ward, you sacrifice it. So one way that Corrupted Shade can get some really good value in this list is by putting it down, hitting a creature with it on our turn, and then using a Silence effect on it afterwards. That way we get to keep the big stat-lined creature while also utilizing the Ward and the attack power in some way. Hulking Mummy is up next. This is a 6-6 for 4 that shackles itself when it goes down onto the board. Pretty straightforward card. It's only shackled for one full turn, and then you can do whatever you want with it, but still, it's a good effect to just get rid of uh, as soon as you put it down in most cases. Imprisoned Death Lord is a 4 cost 7-7, seven, seven, which is a ridiculous stat line, and when an enemy creature is summoned, you shackle the Imprisoned Death Lord. So this effect is a lot worse than the Hulking Mummy. I did put three of them instead of two because I think that the stat line is just insane. And uh, if you can mute this instead of this, you're getting value. There's also only two Corrupted Shades because there's kind of a hierarchy here. Hulking Mummy has a better stat line. Um, <laughs> uh, the Corrupted Shade has the Ward, and the Imprisoned Death Lord, of course, has the best damage of all of them and health. Uh, let's see. The... I think that's the last one that we're really going to be able to, to utilize heavily. The only one that doesn't is the Blood Magic Lord here, which I just wanted to throw in for a sort of high end to the deck, uh, because we really don't have that big of a high end. We're, we're very mid-rangey uh, in general. But yeah, those are all the cards that we're going to want to be using these effects on. I also threw in Waves of the Fallen, because I thought that was a fun way, uh, instead of silencing a creature to kind of uh, turn it into something else and gain some actual value from it, which is very cool to do. And it can be used as removal, uh, in a sense, to get rid of our opponent's creatures. We're also running Necromancer's Amulet, so that way when a friendly creature dies, we gain some health, because we are not going to be running any keywords in this deck, like Drain, so this is going to be our source of life gain that will help us out every once in a while. And we run cards like Rapid Shot and Blood Crazed Daedroth. They work really well together. Same thing with the Hlalu Sharpshooter in order to uh, gain us some draw. Fell the Mighty is removal. Skirmisher's Elixir, really interesting here. So it gives a creature plus two, plus zero, and breakthrough as a support three times. Uh, this thing is really cool because a lot of the stuff that you're going to be doing with this deck is very sneaky. You're going to be putting down a seemingly harmless Siege Catapult in a lane uh, full of nothing, and then you pop down maybe a Mute on it and a Skirmisher's Elixir, and then you you have a 6-4 uh, with Breakthrough on turn 3 instead of, uh, well, it can't be on turn 3, but early in the match instead of a useless 4-4. Four, four. So this really helps you get a little bit of extra uh, push uh, towards your opponent's face in a lot of cases, and I think that it's a lot of fun to play with. Mulamnir, uh, I think I mentioned, is basically removal, so is Waves of the Fallen, and so is the Red Year. Mulamnir does not mind getting silenced after he's already summoned and slayed. 
uh, most of the time. So that's why he's in here. And uh, yeah, all in all, it's a pretty fun list. We've got Galen also. I keep finding stuff to talk about. We've got Galen also that can shuffle more stuff in and Shadowfend Priests can be used to destroy other supports as well as Silence. Uh, Squish the Wimpy is cool too. This is the last card I'm going to talk about, I think. Squish the Wimpy is really cool too because uh, Squish the Wimpy can be used on our creatures that are shackled. So if we don't have a way to get them up with a silence effect, we can actually uh, use Squish, kill something, even though we're shackled. And if we have a uh, Skirmisher's Elixir on the board, we can give that creature breakthrough. And then even though they're stuck on the ground and can't move, they can still do damage to the board and to the uh, opponent that you're facing. So that's everything that I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of fun little things that you're going to see in the video coming up because I'm doing this deck recording or deck explanation after I already did the recording because the original one that I did, I was really low energy with a ear infection. So anyway, uh, we're going to hop on into the first match and I will see you guys on the other side. Okay, our first match is up against Reloc44. They are the pocket emptier and they are on Guildsworn with a Hlalu card back. So not going to make any assumptions right out the gate. They're on a 79 card deck. The thing that's interesting about this deck from what I've played so far is that there's not really a bad opening hand, I guess, uh, that I've had thus far. Like, this isn't too bad, because everything's around 3 to 4 cost. Now, we'll see what kind of deck this person's playing. Cle clearly, they had a 1 cost creature that they could have played. Uh, like, if we lay Siege Catapult down, at this point if i were to use my ring to get that out i'm not going to but i could see a world where that would be good because yeah because then maybe our opponent would attack it or uh we would draw some sort of mute uh silence type effect for that thing as it stands right now it is just going to be kind of in the way Daedric Incursion, a classic. There we go. So check this out. <laughs> uh, we'll mute that. Just mute it twice. Boom. And now we got Blood Crazed. Ooh, I wish that I'd kept the mute for the Corrupted Shade, but that's okay. That was splendid. Yeah, you thank you. My gratitude. This is a very, very fun deck. I can't imagine that he doesn't just have cards to, like, buff this up a little bit. He, he can't be running no more invade cards in his hand. Praise oh, <laughs> okay. I see. Uh, Occult Rightmaster. Probably, probably the worst invade card, I'll say. Uh, I want to get the... Corrupted Shade down. That has the most survivability and immediate utility of any of them. Because these two will be shackled, and I don't have a way to undo that in hand. One thing that I think makes Occult Rightmaster garbage uh, is that it itself is not affected by the invade buffs. So that's why, like, I think that cards like In Invasion Scout... Uh, I'm gonna mute this guy. Oh, get it? I'm gonna mute him? <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, say, though, that Invasion... That was a weird one. Invasion Scout, I think, is better, though, because it's a Daedra, and it can work off of the buffs. Uh... Yeah, that was an odd match. Not going to lie. Okay, we're up against the Deco, the Ghost Whisperer. They are on Telvani, and they have also got a 75 card deck. I think opening with the Encumbered Explorer is going to be good, and I don't think we need need either of those two cards. Yeah, this is a very respectable actual opening hand. It's a very weird last match that we had against the 
invader. I doubt the deco is playing invade, but I've seen it before. Telvani invade. It's not good. It's one of the few things Telvani can't do. Although you don't really see aggro Telvani. That's not really a thing. Okay, so we could get some immediate value out of Corpus Disease. If we put it on the, uh, the Siege Catapult. Sets Masterwork. Okay. I understand now why they were taking so long with their Moment of Clarity. You want to make sure that that is the correct move that you're doing. Uh, so if we go... Let's do Knight of Order. The reason for the Knight of Order here is we can save our four cost charge for a Fell the Mighty. Yeah, there we go. On whatever he should decide to put down. Now let's go four first, then two, then two. And then we'll hit the Fell the Mighty. And I think I'm even going to use a Ring Charge to put an Encumbered Explorer over there. So he's used his Morakai. Okay. He's going to shackle me. <laughs> it doesn't really matter in this deck, I suppose. He's going to give that lethal as well. So not a bad way to plug some of the holes. Uh, we're just going to continue being aggressive here. And I don't mind him... Uh, Having the Sets Master work out, that does not bother me. He could have a Squish the Wimpy to use on this uh, to take out the Siege Catapult. Definite possibility. So we've got 8 damage in this lane. Uses a Crushing Blow on that. Okay. A Skirmisher's Elixir. There we go. So we'll get this down and showcase some of the value that we can get with that. Uh, we could do 6 damage straight to his face and continue having the 8 damage on him. Uh, I think if he's laying this down, it's either out of Desperation or he's got some way to sacrifice it. What are ways that he could sacrifice that? Uh, I don't know. I don't want to take up too much of my opponent's time, so we'll just we'll just kill that. That's fine. Now with Corpus Disease plus the Skirmisher's Elixir, we have a 6-1 over here. Wrath of Sithis. Wow. Interesting card to, to play. Um, I like it. I like that. That's cool. I think now is probably a good time to get rid of that. I'll just hit him. He might not be expecting me to generate a bunch of uh, damage onto this guy. But we'll see. Okay, that's his one and only spirit knife gone. He didn't get to shuffle it in with uh, Therana, which is good. Wave... <laughs> Waves of the Fallen could be really interesting. Yeah, that could be really interesting. Does he have a guard? Abner... Hmm. Not really good options here. So he just laid down a flat Abner Tharn. The Night Mother will guide us. And Ungolum. And Old Velathi. Okay. Oh, so we do. We want to do the silence effects first, so Corpus. Oh, wait, that's not going to work. Huh. Interesting. Um, we will have to. 
do something like this. So I'll equip that. Then we'll hit him. And we actually don't have a way to deal one damage without a creature on the board. So what we're going to have to do is... I always forget how this works. If I do Waves of the Fallen on this, it will turn into a 5-5 five, five Hulking Draugr, but I don't think that it regains cover. So we're actually going to be in for some trouble here. Uh, maybe should have included a charge creature in the deck, but we'll, we'll see. I'll implore him. Because now I'm guessing we're going to be drawing a lot of our, our silence-related cards, because we didn't really get too many of those. We got the corpus diseases, but I'm ready for anything. there's my point is that there's still a lot of those types of creatures. If he puts a drain creature down, I think immediately we have to silence it, get rid of it. But he does have a lot of catching up to do in terms of hell. Oh, he's going to get his masterwork back. That'll be good for him. I was just thinking the other day, I didn't really... Or I, I hadn't really fought against Singleton in quite a while. There's the red year. So I think we just kind of... Hold on. I was going to do an emote, but I didn't want to. I'd like him to play... Oh, okay. Does he have Siege in hand, is the question. Been more worthy. And will he break my rune? No, he won't. Well, I could throw Galen down, but it would be the world's emptiest Galen. Yeah, I want those guardians out of his deck. Been more He's got something buffed up. There she is. So she's going to grab uh, Siege, of course. Probably he'll sacrifice his Ungolem at some point. During Heist... Interesting. They won't even see my blade coming. Wow. So now we kind of are forced into doing the red year. Oh. Do we have the ability <laughs> to sustain this this much of an attack? Because I really don't want him to have Mushroom Tower. Uh. Yeah, I really don't like that. So I'm thinking like Galen, Shadowfen, this. Because I'm gonna nuke the board anyway. If he gains two health here, I don't really care. He's got I didn't actually count, but he's got 12, uh, 18 damage that he could do. Plus he might have a lightning bolt or some other kind of charge creature. Okay, he's going to Shadow Shift. Yep, there's Siege. I really didn't want him to get the double value from Siege. So that's not bad. Especially because it's not a guard. That's fine, because we have Corpus Disease. And that's fine. So that was not a bad... That was not a bad siege at all. Enchanted Plate doesn't buff his damage up at all. Should have been more worthy. Watch yourself now. And Wardcrafter is fine. Okay. So sometimes it just takes a little bit of patience. Like Chris Cornell said. Um, so yeah, we got enough. Uh, Waves of the Fallen. And good game. Boom. Skadoosh. Okay, uh, we're up against uh, Deuce Ita, or Duce Ita, the hero of the people. 
They are on a 100 card Daggerfall deck. Waves of the Fallen came in handy in the last match. I don't know if we won it right off the bat, though. I will keep a Necromancer's Amulet because I haven't actually... I've done a number of tests with this deck, but I've actually never drawn the Necromancer's Amulet. So I think that uh, that'll be fun to have in hand. And the starting hand is very passive, but it should be an okay start. I think we had a pretty good opening uh, of the last match where we were just able to relentlessly hit our opponent for a while there. Okay, Encumbered Explorer is also very good to see. And I often like to lead in the field lane. The shadow lane's more of a place to pivot, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. I have enough to deal with. Don't really have a lot going on. I think we'll do a rapid shot. And that's good. That's gotta be cloak and dagger, I'd imagine. They're coming to get me. I know it. The unstable madman. You hate to see it, but that is a card that's very susceptible to silence cards. I think we'll actually just play a Corrupted Shade against that. I'm fine with sacrificing this card without getting the silence value. It's actually decent. As its own thing. I feel like I've been sleeping on the Corrupted Shade this whole time. Yeah, there we go. So that's something I was a little bit worried about. Okay. What is this? At the end of my turn, right? At the end of your turn of Corrupted Shade. So we don't want to be the one to initiate the attack. I will hit him. I I had somebody comment on the last video. They were like, why do you always put creatures down and then hit your opponent? And the real reason is because I'm stupid. <laughs> like, I know that I should be attacking first, then putting creatures down. But I just forget about it a lot of the time. Now, interestingly, if he doesn't find an answer here, uh, and like a good answer, oh, wow. Ooh, Knight of Order coming down. I was going to say, if he didn't find an answer for that quickly, then uh, I would have actually gotten to use both of the Siege Catapults without silencing them. Uh, as of right now... I'd really like to do a Knight of Order on one of these, but this thing has to be taken care of. So we'll do that, and that. And yeah, we just have to hope for Mute, basically, to nullify all of these effects. And we're kind of going to be racing this person, I'd imagine. Okay, gains Ward. A great way around that, I think, is going to be the Skirmisher's Elixir. Um, we can kill this guy, put the Skirmisher's Elixir on him, uh, kill it, break the ward, do that. And I could have broken a ring charge to gain a Necromancer's Amulet, but I don't know if he's going to be killing these things anytime soon. Out of my way, worm. Well, he silenced it. That's fine. Because we were already silenced. <laughs> uh, I could do yet another Skirmisher's Elixir, but that doesn't seem necessary. I'll just kill that. And I'll put a Hulking Mummy there. And a Hulking Mummy there. Show them we are serious. And that also... Uh, might function doubly so as... Who says doubly so? <laughs> that, that might function um, doubly as kind of a scare to tell him that we have silence effects in our hand, even though we don't really. We've got the Shadowfan Priest, but... Uh, we 
don't really have something that can unchain both of them. But if he... Yeah, if he does that, he loses, so... GG. <laughs> Unless he's got some magic one-cost card in these colors I... I can't think of that will allow him to win. Oh, that's good. That would be good for him. Okay. And this is one of the reasons that Shadowfen Priest is so good, is because it can target anything. That's another thing with Lightning Bolt. The utility is uh, far, far, far more increased than it would be uh, if it just said that it targets enemies. GG, though. Okay, we're up against Joyce Bleak, the Daedric Master. And Joyce is on Mage, which is a deck that I typically enjoy playing against. They've got a 78-card Mage deck. I like this opening hand. I think that we've been getting a little bit unlucky with some of the starting hands. Hello. Siege Catapult is good. I have enough to deal with already. We're going to have two creatures that can't attack for a minute, though. So many curses, so little time. He's going to get something either really useless or kind of cool. Uh, Craven Conscript. That's funny. Well, we'll throw that down. <laughs> okay. I have enough to throw the corrupted shade down. A knight of order would be peak here. He's actually going to use a Piercing Javelin on that. Wow. What about this? What does she have to say about that? I'm saying she because their name is Joyce, so... My assumption is... Feminine. I had a teacher in high school. Uh... Her first name was Joyce. Not a nice lady. <laughs> she was an English teacher. My 12th grade year. Just did not... Ooh. Yeah, Conjuration Scholar is kind of a cringe card. Conjuration Tutor. In my opinion. I think we're actually going to silence that. Let's begin with that card just generates so much power. Okay. I have enough to deal with already. I think we want more blood magic lords, right? Sounds about right. Plus with a squish the wimpy in hand and the red deer coming up, I'm not super afraid of what he's doing. Also two lightning bolts down. Okay, so now he's got six Lava Atronachs in his deck. Very upsetting. Uh, yeah, we'll just wait, I guess. Ten hours later. Man. Let us begin the lesson. They have 65... I, maybe that didn't register when I read it. They have... How many cards in their mage list? Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh... So, I'm not going to play against this anymore. I don't want to play against this anymore. This this is just... I've seen this deck so many times. It's making me... Like, die from boredom over here. I'm, I'm checking my phone. I'd rather not. Thank you. 
Mysterious 75 on Guild Sworn. Hero of the People. They are on a 75 card deck. And we've got kind of a weird opening hand, but we're going to keep the rapid shot. And the Encumbered Explorer is not too bad. I also... Eh, I mean, Waves of the Fallen. Like, we don't want that on turn one, but we want that at some point, so... I guess it's kind of okay to have in our hand, considering that we're probably going to be drawing uh, appropriate level <laughs> cards for the rest of the uh, time being. So, we got it out of the way, I guess. Fighters Guild Hall. So that really makes me want a... Uh, I'm going to cycle my cards here with Rapid Shot. That really makes me want a Shadowfen Priest. Okay. Well, unfortunately, this thing is going to be able to take damage. Um, we're going to want the Corrupted Shade down, because again, that is a far more consistent card than the Hulking Mummy or the Imprisoned Death Lord, when we don't have access to silenced creatures. Oh, he's going to silence it for me. <laughs> okay. I will, uh, I'll take that. That's, that's cool. Very chill. Uh, okay. Shadowfen Priest goes down. There we go. That should take some power level out of his deck. I'm not quite sure what kind of deck this is. It's a little bit bizarre. It's probably some sort of expertise thing. But, I was gonna just say, I saw the Daedroth, so... Yeah, some people just play this game differently. Um, Mulamnir actually is a really good option for, uh, for this. So, that should help. Uh, we're gonna throw the, I think the Imprisoned Death Lord down next. Maybe the Hulking Mummy, because we don't have immediate access. And I did that thing again where I placed a creature down and then I forgot to hit, so. I was gonna hit before, but I don't want him to just get a free Piercing Javelin to take that out immediately. Invasion party. Wow. Well, that's rough. We will have Waves of the Fallen to turn his Oblivion Portal into uh, something pretty pathetic soon, so I'm not too worried about that. I think uh, we could silence this and this. Yeah, we'll silence that and that. And I don't have a reason for Fell the Mighty anymore. We'll take this out. And then we'll take... I guess we'll take this out. And then we'll do the Imprisoned Death Lord over here. And that'll set us up nicely for Waves of the Fallen, because he'll probably play in the Shadow Lane going forward. To protect his portal. Morven Centurion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if, is that Waves of the Fallen worthy? I really don't think it is. Uh, hmm. Because I can just pop that, scare him a little bit, right? And then I can play... What does this do? Yeah, I can just do a Fell the Mighty. And then I'm going to continue playing over here. I'll put a bunch of Mulamnirs in, because that's kind of funny. And we're, we're at that Magicka right now, so those will get value if we draw them. And he's got a Giant's Camp now. <laughs> and a Drive Mad. Well. It seems like we've effectively dealt with this guy. I'll play this Mulamnir down. Kill that. And then we'll kill that. And now we do have to worry about his giant's camp, but... Things could be worse. I guess we'll start going. Uh, three, six. Lay down the encumbered explorer. I'll hit... Uh, I'll hit the encumbered explorer with the rapid shot. There 
use that and a siege catapult cool <laughs> so if he's got dawn's wrath it's definitely going to go down over here but that's okay because we've got 11 damage over this way so i think we might be able to survive this crisis begins okay so dawn's wrath does not really exist as a problem anymore yep okay so we should win because we just go yeah okay he's just gonna leave very bizarre deck but i don't know it was kind of interesting okay we're up against present placebo the hortator they are on warrior and they have a 52 card deck uh do we want the knight of order and the mute right at the beginning I think we can toss back Knight of Order because we might get something. Okay. I don't usually mind starting out with a rapid shot. That's okay. So this guy's got a Ebonheart card back, which is cool. I usually always join the Ebonheart Pact when I play ESO. Uh, for those of you, there's, you know, not that many of you, but for those of you wondering about the, uh, the Elder Scrolls Online playthrough that we were doing uh i just sort of fell off with it um i do want to get back on that because i do want to finish elder scrolls online uh for the channel at some point but it's such a commitment that game is so long okay i always like seeing someone use warrior's fury double craven conscript we probably look like a deck that we totally are not right now. Training grounds, okay. So he is an orc deck for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, I think we mute this and this. Necromancer's Amulet. I'm just gonna... Well, that's too bad. But it's probably just... Yeah. One of those guys. I will actually rapid shot this as well. We get another mute. That's a decent reward. Uh, that training grounds is gonna be really, really obnoxious. Chieftain's Banner is also really, really obnoxious. Um, I don't want to give him another card. Let's Rapid Shot. Corrupted Shade seems good. Hmm, does it? I could do a Skirmisher's Elixir. really don't like the idea of giving him that card, though. He's already got such an advantage on me with his two supports. And my supports are not as good as his. I'll lay down the Corrupted Shade. And I'll see what he does. I'll just toss it back to him. Because maybe he'll hit my face. Or maybe he'll do that, you know? Okay, well, we were able to expend one of his removal actions without having to, to waste a mute in the process, so that's good. We'll just get the Skirmisher's Elixir down now. And then I think Mulamnir can come down soon and have some decent value. That's definitely getting silenced. So is that. We need to get a Shadowfen Priest soon. Also, the Red Year is pretty good. I'll let him hit me a little bit, especially now that we've got the Red Year. So this will have to be a little bit more of a defensive type of game. Okay. Halu Sharpshooter. So this is going to be interesting, because we'll do Craven Conscript. Halu Sharpshooter. Um, this, and then we can mute uh, this and this. 
I think I'll even give a Skirmisher's Elixir here, but just that way he has to kind of make... Or he has to kill one of his creatures. Or equip an item, I suppose. Champion of the Arena. Sheesh. That is ridiculous. Okay, so Mulamnir will come down to kill that. There we go. Another Fell the Mighty could kill that. Or that dude. Uh, Knight of Order. Could be good. If we go like... Blood Crazed... Well, I don't want to do Blood Crazed. Uh, if we do Hulking Mummy... Hulking Mummy Knight of Order seems good. And then I'll just hit him. And I'll ring out a Blood Crazed. So we've got double Corpus and this. That we actually might have lethal. He's probably going to kill this. Bushwhack, yeah. Okay. So we don't have lethal anymore. He can't play that, thankfully. Does he have a wood orc? Okay, he's got shield breaker. Okay. Uh, the red ear could come down and be really helpful. Or it could not. <laughs> I don't know. I think this thing's going to get buffed up. We don't really want that. We also don't want this. Um, we could do Corpus Squish and kill one of these. Champion of the Arena coming down is going to be really bad. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just hit him, and then we'll see what he does. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> We've got options in hand, but... Ooh. Okay. My turn. Prison Death Lord. Squish the Wimpy. And, uh. I think just for that guy. Well, no. We're not gonna mess around with it. He's got way more cards than I do. Gives me a mute. And then he's gonna squish me. Okay. This has become a really interesting match. I'll prove my nobility to the world. All right. Yeah, I don't like that one bit. <laughs> Thankfully, we drew a Fell the Mighty. I'm not getting many creatures, unfortunately. Something that we could... Oh, yeah, he's playing really smart, too. We need to get rid of one of these. I think we need to get rid of the Chieftain's Banner. Fell the Mighty. Stone Throw. Okay. And there's the Rothgar Frickin' Forge. <laughs> Uh, wow. Well, uh... I think we can at least mute this. And... 
we'll just have to hope and pray that he doesn't have an item. Even though we know he does. He used plunder earlier. And yeah. Hadn't used the items from that yet. Oh, but that's... Oh, I was going to say, that's that's going to keep me alive. <laughs> okay, yeah. He had another one. Um, yeah, GG. That We just kind of got outpaced in that one. And he wasn't playing all of his cards down. He had a pretty smart uh, game sense. Okay, we're up against Terror Druid, the Gravedigger. They are on Empire. A uh, 97 card Empire deck, and I really don't like this opening hand. Uh, I like this one slightly more, save the red year. So, Encumbered Explorer will go down turn one. Always a good guy to have. Ongolum Shadow Lane. Interesting. Throw the Siege Catapult over here with the Encumbered Explorer, just in case. Yeah, just in case he's actually able to... Or we're actually able to get that thing to go off. Double Mastermind. Okay. So now we do this. And we've got a pretty strong lane on turn four. Javelin. Imperial Might. <laughs> I know in editing I, I probably added something stupid there, uh, but I can't help it. It's I've done it I've done that joke before. But uh It is too funny to me. What do I say? Oops. Ah, Martin. Okay, so... I think we'll just start hitting him. Uh, Corrupted Shade can go down, or I'll, I'll do... Yeah, I'll do Corrupted Shade. And if he just rests on his turn, we have Hulking Mummy, Falu Sharpshooter to eliminate his Martin. It's Martin. Thornhist Mage. Ooh, that actually cocked him. Yeah, that was not the right move, unfortunately, because he boosted his Magicka too much, so we felt mighty on that, uh, because it's in range now, and then we'll do this, and this, and there we go. GG. These games can either go really quickly and easily, or slowly and painfully. <laughs> Okay, we're up against Extro888, the Aldmeri Dominion Ambassador. This person is on Aldmeri Dominion, uh, which, yeah, tag checks out. And uh, they're on a House Dagoth card back with 100 cards, so we'll see how that goes. I asked my friend, uh, my roommate, like years ago, what card back I should use. And he knew nothing about Elder Scrolls whatsoever. I just showed him all the card backs that I had, and he told me that I should run the Aldmeri Dominion one because it looked really cool. And so I actually had that one on for, I don't know, quite a while. Uh, we'll go with the Craven because we have Squish the Wimpy coming up next, and we could draw either a Knight of Order or a Mute or Sharpshooter, something of that nature. Okay. Squish will have to do. We want to kill this thing before it gets ward, and I don't really mind if he uses his lethal creature to kill my Craven. Did you guys see that uh, Craven the Hunter movie is supposed to come out soon? That is just so bizarre. 
because I really like Spider-Man. He's been one of my favorite superheroes ever since I was a little kid. Um, but I just don't know why Sony insists on making these absolutely insane movies. So his Burn Clan, that's uh, kind of mysterious to me. I could silence the Burn Clan. It would have to be something like... Hmm. Yeah, we could do this. Right? Do this. Blood Crazed. Then we do Hlalu Sharpshooter. Silence. Kill. And then we've still got this. Pretty successful turn. He's still got that Breton Conjurer over there, which I don't like, but... Unless he Shadow Shifts it over. We shouldn't really have too many issues. It's running Execute, which probably won't get too much value in our deck, or against our deck, going forward. And now is time to make a decision on what is more important. Removing this or silencing one of these? Hmm, that is the question. Okay, we're going to swing first, not make rookie mistakes. Craven, Imprisoned Deathlord. I think we're just going to put creatures down to spook him, and then we'll see what he does. Or she, I suppose. Uh, okay, <laughs> so yeah, uh, the spooking kind of worked. Sometimes it's about getting in your opponent's head more than it is about actually winning the match. We're up against Lord of Blasts, the creator. They are on Telvani. Rank 6. Uh, finally climbing up in the world a little bit again. <laughs> when I first started this channel, I think I was at rank 3. Uh, and then I stopped taking the competitive aspect of it so seriously. So I've plummeted quite far in the ranks. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's not that important. Um, Lord of Blasts is on a 100 card Telvani deck. So we'll see what kind of shenanigans we run into. A turn one Encumbered Explorer is something that not a whole lot of people are ready for. <laughs> and it's also something that we've gotten quite a few times, miraculously. Mummify. Wow. Okay, well that's out of his hand. And we don't have to expend any resources on that. I think the Corrupted Shade can go down next. We have Squish the Wimpy Lalu Sharpshooter to allow it to stay around. Okay. It's going to Firebolt me. How rude. Where is that damage going to go? That's perfect. Then we do Encumbered Explorer. Lalu Sharpshooter, <laughs> and now we get to keep it. Cool beans. And we are at 11 health on our opponent. Completely dry Blood Sacrament. I understand why, though, now that he played that. Is that, uh... Oh, God, is that Steve Bloom? As the Encumbered Explorer? That would kind of shock me if it was. Your destruction is at hand. Okay, Knight of Order would go crazy. Rapid Shot will be fine. I'll Rapid Shot uh, this, this guy, I guess. Fell the Mighty... The reason I didn't rapid shot this is because I don't actually want him to be able to kill this, because then he'll get his whatever he consumed back. What did he consume? Can I not see it? Hello? Mummify? He consumed Mummify. Okay. I'm just blind sometimes. But yeah, uh, I don't want him to get his Mummify back, if I can help it, so... That's why I shot my own guy. Backstory explained. Okay. 
And he... Okay, he's going to betray that. Probably drains blood on this guy. Oh, okay. That was a pretty good way to deal with my board state, I would say. Oh, but check this out here. So we attack first with this. Then we go like that. Boom. Actual value from Waves of the Fallen. I don't think I've ever seen this card before, actually. Hulking Draugr. Ooh, that's good. We need a silence effect pronto. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. Boom. Boom. Fell the Mighty. We've got another Fell the Mighty. Squish the Wimpy coming up. Should be pretty hard for him to deal with this board state. Yep. Just like that. Good game, though. We're up against uh, Catanius, the Aldmeri Dominion Ambassador. We've seen two of them in the past 15 minutes. Uh, 47 plus 3 is 50, so they're on a 50-card Sorcerer deck. I've, I think I've featured two Sorcerer lists on the channel. Uh, Drard, which was like my second or third ever deck on the channel. And the... Oh, three. Uh, the Unique video. The Singleton Unique video, which I really, really love that deck. I need to play that some more. And uh, what else? The Necromancer deck that I did for Mana Marco. So if you haven't seen those, go give them a look. So far, I don't really like what's going on. Throw a Siege Catapult over there this time. I've traditionally been playing it over here, but what the hell, why not? Why not play it over here by the Brutal Ashlander? That way, if we get a Knight of Order, it can mute both of them. Shadowfen Priest is also a card. <laughs> uh, not really getting anything that we can play. We'll see what he decides to do. If I were him, honestly, I would have hit the... Uh, hit the this. I'm actually going to do a squish here. And it kills this guy. You can tell because the blue border went away that surrounds it, which means that uh, you can't control the card anymore, which means that it died. Helpful little tip there. Uh, yeah, I really like Sorcerer, though. I think uh, just Sorcerer's Negation is a great reason to play that deck. And there it is. Now, that actually works in my favor in this deck, because we we want to be silenced. And we don't want our opponent to get too many more cards than us, but I'm going to. This could be a Lightning Bolt, but we know that he probably doesn't have one, because... It's a prophecy, so I would have hit it on that last rune breaking. But Lightning Bolt could be a good answer to our Siege Catapult here. Or that. That's totally understandable as well. Six. Oh. Okay. Knight of Order here uh, is an option. <laughs> it's, I don't really like it, but uh, it's certainly a thing we could do. He may have uh, that one guy coming down soon. I'll play... Why not? I'll just play it down here, just to do something. Um, yeah, he may have the skeleton guy. This may be tribal skeletons with a brutal Ashlander and a young mammoth somehow. I don't, I don't know. Seen a lot of strange deck construction in my day. This day is mine. Camlorn Hero. Yikes, okay. So he is putting down the pain. Uh, Waves of the Fallen could be good over there, I suppose. Um, you cannot. Tricky, tricky deck, though. This guy is constructed. I think we have to do Craven Knight of Order, right? On this lane. Because the Knight deals with the Camlorn and the Craven deals with the Young Mammoth. Unfortunately, I don't have the ring this game. 
Ugh. Well, we've got corpus disease, so that's fine. Their time grows short. Okay, so Waves of the Fallen is absolutely the answer here. By dawn and dusk. I think. Maybe not. We will seize our own oh, that sucks too. Man, this guy has got quite the board state going on. Um... Yeah, I don't think that we can win this, because even Waves of the Fallen is going to turn this into six, because we'll kill one of them with the Knight of Order, but even still, he's got all this over here, plus this. So, yeah, unwinnable. Um, but, good match nonetheless. I could do a Corpus Disease uh, instead. There might be some way around this. Corpus here. Walu Sharpshooter on that. Then Corrupted Shade. I mean, it's a losing board state either way. They just threw down too much. Too much too soon. He's actually got the Royal Sage this time too. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. <laughs> okay. Nice. You fight well. Now, is he the type of player that wants to keep this match going because he's got me on the ropes? Or is he the type of player that wants the win? I think he's the type of player that wants the win. Another Royal Sage. Regenerate, drain, guard, lethal, guard, drain. Dead. Okay. Yeah, a little bit outpaced on that one. That's okay. We're up against the Nord guest on Mage, the Forgotten Hero. Um, they're on an 88 card deck. And this opening hand is not terrible. We just want to make sure that we've got something damaged before we play the Blood Crazed Daedroth, unless it's a necessity to put him down. Oh boy, an Atronach deck. Oh man. This is the type of stuff that I hate. Oh. Not an Atronach deck then. But a Invade deck utilizing that card to summon an Atronach. Maybe. Okay, obviously we'll have to deal with this at some point, but we want to deal with the portal as well, so you can probably get away with a mute on this and this. He will have access to piercing javelins at this point. There's the sharpshooter. Shoot, sharp shooter. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So we'll mute this, mute this, destroy the portal, Lalu Sharpshooter, pop that in the mouth, <laughs> and do that. Sometimes the things that I say, I'm like, I don't know if that's, that's a good way to phrase that. It's going to execute... The more consistent card makes sense. And he's gonna okay. play a blade. A blade's guardian. Hmm. Interesting take on invade, for sure. Uh is it worth it to use a fell the mighty on that? In an 88 card mage list. <laughs> I don't know. I'll definitely play... I want something over here. If this dies. And I don't think a blood crazed Daedroth is really enough. Um... Yeah, I'll do Fell the Mighty and then I'll... 
I'll hit him. This could be, again, like I was saying before, this could be Lightning Bolt or Piercing Javelin. I'm hoping it's not, but it could be. But we really want to have some presence on the board coming up. Okay, Storm Atronach is another great reason to use a Fell the Mighty. I think we'll be able to utilize the Red Year in this deck. Or rather, against this deck. And I'm honestly not so sure if this is Invade. It might be like Singleton. It's trying to utilize Daedra, so, you know, you throw some Invade cards in there, but I don't really know. It's a little bit odd from what we've seen thus far. I'll take you all down with me. Imbued Brett, really. Okay, Knight of Order is probably best here. And we can just do that. Do 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 the card back oh what does the card back say? I was trying to read that. Get out of my Knight of Order is not super good here anymore. I guess we'll do Blood Crazed, Daedroth, Corrupted Shade. I'll hit him. And if we can get like a sneaky little Corpus Disease on this guy, Knight of Order, Corpus Disease, uh, we can win. Provided he doesn't have another Piercing Javelin, which he probably doesn't. Gains Ward and Guard, but that's okay. I think we win. Yep, I think we win. Good game. Knight of Order. Corpus. Boom. Okay, that'll do it for the video today. I uh, I, I kind of started to run into a lot of similar types of decks near the end there. I feel like I was playing the same things against some people, so some stuff got cut out. But... Uh, yeah, for the most part, pretty good matches all in all, I think. This deck is definitely not, like, the best deck that you can play, right? But it's something that's fun, it's different, and your opponent is really never going to be expecting this. Uh, the Craven Conscripts, I noticed, they really tend to throw people for a loop if you can get them early, because they think, when they see Warrior Colors and Craven Conscript, they think you're going to be equipping an item onto that, and then they'll use some sort of removal on it right away when... Perhaps you didn't even have anything you were going to do with that for a few turns because you can't mute it. So, uh, pretty interesting. A lot of these cards, too, like the Craven Conscript, Hulking Mummy, and Imprisoned Death Lord, would work really well in a Shackle based deck, which is something that I'm uh, planning on doing eventually, but just haven't really gotten around to yet. So, this is my take on Self Silence Warrior. Let me know if you guys have ever played this or if there are any cards that you would consider adding yourself. Um, and keep an eye out on the channel for videos coming out soon. I, Like I said in the last video, I've got a bunch of little projects that I'm working on, as many of you know. So they'll be coming out here and there. Not all of them are going to be Elder Scrolls related. Not all of them are going to be Elder Scrolls Legends related. But uh, I hope nonetheless that you guys will um, stick around and, and see what the channel has to offer. So thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.